Captain Trevor Sinclair cursed under his breath as the alarm blared through the cockpit of his scout ship. Red lights flashed, bathing the cramped space in an ominous glow. He frantically scanned the readouts, his heart sinking as he realized the extent of the damage. The last asteroid field had been a bitch to navigate, and despite his best efforts, the ship had taken a beating. Damn it all to hell, he muttered, slamming his fist against the console. He was light years from the nearest human outmuscled on a solo recon mission in uncharted space. And now, with his ship's systems failing one by one, he was well and truly fucked. The ship shuddered violently as another system gave out. Trevor gripped the controls, fighting to keep the vessel steady. But it was a losing battle. The planet looming ahead was his only hope. It was a gamble, but he had no choice. He had to attempt an emergency landing. As he entered the atmosphere, the ship bucked and shook, the heat shield straining against the friction. Trevor gritted his teeth, sweat pouring down his face as he wrestled with the controls. The ground rushed up to meet him, a vast expanse of dense jungle broken only by the occasional clearing. With a bone-jarring impact, the ship hit the ground, skidding and bouncing before finally coming to a rest in a tangle of twisted metal and shattered trees. Trevor was thrown forward, his harness digging into his chest as his head slammed against the console. For a moment, everything went black. When he came to, the first thing he noticed was the silence. The alarms had stopped, the only sound the hiss of escaping air and the distant calls of alien wildlife. Trevor unbuckled his harness with shaking hands, wincing as he felt the tender spot on his forehead where a nasty bruise was already forming. He staggered to his feet, grabbing his survival pack from the storage compartment. At least that had survived intact. He checked his sidearm, making sure it was fully charged, before holstering it and making his way to the airlock. The door opened with a hiss and Trevor stepped out into a world unlike any he had ever seen. The trees towered overhead, their trunks as wide as houses, their leaves a riot of colors, purple, orange, and a shimmering blue-green. The air was thick and humid, heavy with the scent of alien flowers and the musk of unknown beasts. But there was something else, too. A feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes tracking his every move. Trevor's hand instinctively went to his sidearm as he scanned the jungle's edge, his senses on high alert. He needed to find shelter and fast. Night was falling, the twin moons rising huge and silver in the darkening sky. Trevor had no idea what kind of predators might emerge in the darkness, and he had no intention of finding out. He set off into the jungle, hacking his way through the undergrowth with his machete. The going was slow, the vines and creepers seeming to reach out and grab at him with every step. Sweat soaked his shirt, plastering it to his skin as the humidity pressed down like a physical weight. Just as he was beginning to despair of ever finding a suitable campsite, he stumbled into a clearing. And there, rising up before him, like a mirage, was a structure unlike anything he had ever seen. It was a temple of some kind, its walls carved from gleaming black stone, shot through with veins of glowing blue crystal. Soaring arches and graceful spires reached towards the sky, while intricate carvings covered every surface, depicting scenes of strange rituals and even stranger creatures. Trevor approached cautiously, his hand never leaving his sidearm. The temple seemed deserted, but he wasn't about to take any chances. He climbed the steps, his boots ringing on the polished stone, and entered the cavernous interior. Inside, the air was cool and still, the only light coming from the softly glowing crystals embedded in the walls. Trevor's footsteps echoed as he explored, marveling at the alien architecture, the graceful curves and impossible angles that seemed to defy the laws of physics. And then he heard it, a soft rustle, the barest whisper of fabric against stone. He spun around, his sidearm leaping into his hand, but he was too late. A figure emerged from the shadows, moving with a grace and speed that was utterly inhuman. It was a female, tall and lithe, her skin a pale lavender, her eyes a piercing silver. She wore a flowing gown of some shimmering material that clung to her curves, leaving little to the imagination and in her hand she held a wicked-looking blade, its edge glinting in the dim light. Welcome, human, she purred, her voice low and seductive. We've been waiting for you. Trevor's finger tightened on the trigger, but he hesitated. There was something about her, a raw sensuality that made his pulse race and his mouth go dry. He shook his head, trying to clear it, but it was like trying to think through a haze of desire. Who are you? He managed to rasp out. 
his voice sounding hoarse and strained to his own ears. What do you want? The female smiled, a slow, predatory curve of her lips. I am Nara, High Priestess of the Talonari. And as for what I want, she took a step closer, her hips swaying, her eyes locked on his. I want you, human. We all do. Trevor's mind raced as he tried to process her words. The Talonari, he had never heard of them. And what did she mean? They all wanted him before he could ask. More figures emerged from the shadows, a dozen or more females, all as breathtakingly beautiful and scantily clad as Nara. They surrounded him, their eyes hungry, their hands reaching out to caress his skin. You don't understand, Nara purred, her breath hot against his ear. There has been a plague, a curse that has wiped out all the males of our species. We are the last of the Talonari, and we are desperate to rebuild our numbers. Her hands slid down his chest, her nails raking lightly over his skin. And you, human, are the answer to our prayers. You will be our mate, the father of a new generation of Talonari. Trevor's head spun as he tried to make sense of it all. A plague that killed only males? A temple full of gorgeous, horny, alien women who wanted to jump his bones? It sounded like something out of a bad porno, not real life. But the heat of their bodies pressed against his was all too real, the scent of their arousal thick in the air. And despite himself, Trevor felt his own body responding, his dignity hardening in his pants as Nara's hands slid lower. I... I can't, he stammered, even as his hips bucked involuntarily into her touch. I have to get back to my ship to repair it and get off this planet. Nara laughed, a low throaty sound that sent shivers down his spine. Oh, you're not going anywhere, human. You're ours now, and we're not letting you go. And with that, she pulled him into a searing kiss, her tongue plundering his mouth as her hands roamed over his body. The other females closed in, their own hands and mouths joining the fray until Trevor was lost in a sea of writhing, eager flesh. He knew he should resist, should fight his way free and make a run for it. But God help him, it felt so good, so right. And as Nara's hand closed around his manhood, stroking him to full hardness, he knew he was lost. He surrendered to the sensations, to the pleasure and the passion, letting the Talonari females have their way with him. And as he sank into their embrace, a small part of him wondered if he would ever want to leave this place, this moment. But that was a problem for another time. For now, there was only the heat and the hunger, the primal need that consumed them all. And Trevor gave himself over to it, body and soul, ready to face whatever challenges this strange new world might bring. Trevor awoke to the sound of birdsong, the trilling melodies strange and alien to his ears. He blinked, momentarily disoriented, before the memories of the previous night came flooding back. The crash landing, the temple, the Talonari females. He sat up, wincing at the soreness in his muscles. He was lying on a bed of soft furs, the pelts of some unknown beast, in a room that was all graceful curves and shimmering crystals. Sunlight streamed in through high arched windows, casting everything in a soft golden glow. Beside him, Nara stirred, her lavender skin seeming to glow in the morning light. She stretched languidly, her lithe body arching in a way that made Trevor's mouth go dry. Good morning, human, she purred, her silver eyes glinting with mischief. I trust you slept well? Trevor swallowed hard, trying to ignore the way his body reacted to her proximity. Yeah, I guess. Listen, Nara, about last night. She placed a finger on his lips, silencing him. Hush, my sweet. There's no need for regrets or recriminations. What happened between us was natural, beautiful. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Trevor gently but firmly removed her hand. That's not the point. The point is I have to get back to my ship to repair it and get off this planet. I can't stay here no matter how tempting the offer might be. Nara's eyes narrowed, a flash of anger passing over her perfect features. You would leave us? Leave me? After all we shared? Trevor sighed, running a hand through his hair. It's not like that. I have a mission, a duty to the Terran Confederation. I can't just abandon that. Not even for... He gestured helplessly, encompassing her, the room, the entire situation. Nara was silent for a long moment, her gaze boring into his. Then abruptly, she rose from the bed, 
the furs falling away to reveal her naked form. Trevor averted his eyes, trying to focus on anything but the way the sunlight played over her curves. Very well, human, she said, her voice cold and clipped. If that is your wish, I will not stop you. But know this, the jungle is a dangerous place, filled with predators, both animal and plant. You may find that leaving is not as easy as you think. With that, she turned and stalked from the room, leaving Trevor alone with his thoughts. He sat there for a long time, trying to make sense of it all. Part of him wanted nothing more than to chase after Nara, to lose himself in her embrace once more. But another part, the part that had sworn an oath to the Confederation, knew that he had to at least try to complete his mission. Finally, he rose, dressing quickly in his tattered uniform. His survival pack and sidearm were where he had left them, and he slung them over his shoulder before making his way out of the temple. The jungle was just as oppressive as he remembered, the heat and humidity sapping his strength with every step. He consulted his wrist comp, trying to get a bearing on his ship's location, but the dense canopy overhead made it impossible to get a clear signal. He pressed on, hacking his way through the undergrowth with his machete. He had been walking for hours and the sun was high overhead when he heard it, a low, menacing growl that seemed to come from all around him. Trevor froze, his hand going to his sidearm. He scanned the jungle, trying to pinpoint the source of the sound, but the foliage was too dense. And then, without warning, it burst from the undergrowth, a nightmarish creature, all teeth and claws and mottled, leathery skin. It was huge, easily twice the size of a man, with a gaping maw filled with razor-sharp fangs. Its eyes were a sickly yellow, and they fixed on Trevor with a hunger that was all too intelligent. Trevor didn't hesitate. He drew his sidearm, aiming for the creature's head and squeezing the trigger. The blast caught it square between the eyes, but instead of dropping, the beast merely shook its head, as if shaking off a minor annoyance. Fuck me, Trevor muttered, backing away slowly. The creature advanced, its claws flexing, its jaws slavering. Trevor fired again and again, but the blast seemed to have no effect. And then with a roar that shook the very trees, it charged. Trevor turned to run, but his foot caught on a root and he went sprawling. The creature was on him in an instant, its fetid breath hot on his face as it lunged for his throat. Trevor closed his eyes, waiting for the searing pain of its fangs. But it never came. Instead, there was a flash of silver, a blur of lavender, and the creature reeled back, howling in pain. Trevor looked up to see Nara standing over him, her blade dripping with black ichor. I told you the jungle was dangerous, she said, offering him a hand. Trevor took it, allowing her to pull him to his feet. You're lucky I decided to follow you. Trevor dusted himself off, trying to slow his racing heart. I had it under control, he muttered, but even he didn't believe it. Nara raised an eyebrow. Of course you did. That's why you were about to become that thing's lunch. Trevor opened his mouth to retort, but then closed it again. She was right, as much as he hated to admit it. Thanks, he said grudgingly. I owe you one. Nara smiled, a slow, sensual curve of her lips. Oh, I'm sure we can think of some way for you to repay me. Her hands slid down his chest, her nails raking lightly over his skin. But first, we need to get you back to the temple. The jungle is no place for a human, especially not one as valuable as you. Trevor wanted to protest, to insist that he had to get back to his ship. But the truth was he was exhausted, his muscles aching and his head spinning from the close call with the creature. And the thought of being alone with Nara again, of losing himself in her touch. Lead the way, he said, his voice rough with desire. Nara's smile widened, and she took his hand, guiding him back through the jungle towards the temple. As they walked, Trevor couldn't help but marvel at her grace, the way she moved through the undergrowth as if it wasn't even there. She was a predator, he realized, as deadly as she was beautiful. And yet there was something about her, a vulnerability beneath the surface that called to him on a primal level, they reached the temple as the sun was setting, the sky ablaze with oranges and purples. Nara led him inside, past the soaring arches and glowing crystals, to a room he hadn't seen before. It was a bedchamber, the walls draped with silks and the floor strewn with plush cushions. Rest now, my sweet, Nara purred, pushing him gently towards the bed. You've had a trying day. Let me take care of you. Trevor didn't resist as she stripped him of his clothes, 
her hands roaming over his body with a hunger that matched his own. And as she lowered herself onto him, her heat enveloping him, he let himself forget about his mission, about the Confederation and the war and everything else. In that moment, there was only Nara and the pleasure she brought him. And as he lost himself in her, Trevor knew that leaving this place, leaving her, would be the hardest thing he had ever done. But that was a problem for another time. For now, there was only the two of them, moving together in the ancient dance of passion and desire. And Trevor surrendered to it, letting it consume him, body and soul. Days turned into weeks as Trevor lost himself in the pleasures of the temple and the company of the Talonari females. He knew he should be trying to find a way off this planet to repair his ship and complete his mission. But every time he thought about leaving, about saying goodbye to Nara, his heart clenched and his resolve wavered. She had become everything to him, his lover, his confidant, his reason for being. The bond between them was more than just physical. It was a connection of souls, a merging of hearts and minds that transcended mere lust or desire. But as much as he wanted to stay, Trevor knew that he couldn't abandon his duty forever. He was a soldier of the Terran Confederation, sworn to protect humanity from the alien threats that lurked in the depths of space. And so, with a heavy heart, he finally broached the subject with Nara. I have to go back, he said softly, as they lay entwined in the afterglow of their lovemaking. I have to finish what I started. Nara was silent for a long moment, her silver eyes searching his. I knew this day would come, she said at last, her voice tinged with sorrow. But I had hoped, I had hoped that you might choose to stay, to make a new life here with me. Trevor felt a lump form in his throat, and he had to blink back the sudden sting of tears. Believe me, there's nothing I want more, but I have a responsibility, a duty that I can't ignore. The Confederation needs me, Nara. Humanity needs me. She nodded, a single tear tracing a path down her lavender cheek. I understand your loyalty, your sense of honor. It's one of the things I love most about you, Trevor Sinclair. Love. The word hung in the air between them, a declaration and a promise all in one. Trevor felt his heart swell and he pulled her close, kissing her with all the passion and tenderness he possessed. I love you too, Nara, he whispered against her lips, and I swear on everything I hold dear that I will come back to you. No matter what it takes, no matter how long it takes, I will find my way back to your arms. She smiled through her tears, her hand cupping his cheek. I will hold you to that promise, my love and I will be here waiting for you until the stars burn out and the universe grows cold. They made love one last time, a bittersweet joining of bodies and souls. And then with a final kiss and a whispered goodbye, Trevor set out into the jungle, his heart heavy, but his resolve unshakable. The journey back to his ship was arduous, the dangers of the jungle seeming to multiply with every step. But Trevor was a changed man, tempered by his experiences and driven by a new sense of purpose. He fought off the predators and the perils, his skills honed by his time among the Talonari. When he finally reached the crash site, he found his ship battered but salvageable. It took him weeks of hard work and improvisation, but at last he managed to get the engines online and the hull patched enough for space travel. As he prepared for takeoff, Trevor took one last look at the alien world that had become his home. He thought of Nara, of the love and the passion they had shared and he felt a pang of longing so intense it took his breath away. But he knew that he had to go, that his destiny lay among the stars, fighting for the survival and the future of his species. And so, with a final, silent promise to return, he fired up the engines and blasted off into the sky. As he broke atmosphere and set a course for the nearest Confederation outpost, Trevor felt a sense of peace settle over him. He had found something on this planet, something precious and rare, and he knew that it would sustain him through the trials and the tribulations to come. For he was a human, a member of a species that had clawed its way to the stars through sheer grit and determination. And though the universe was vast and filled with dangers, he knew that nothing could stand in the way of the unyielding human spirit. He was Trevor Sinclair, soldier of the Terran Confederation, lover of Nara, and he would fight to his last breath to protect those he held dear. For he was human, and in the end, that was all that mattered.